Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Our first story of the day is by disgruntled veteran. It's a cane, not an axe. So a little background on me. I'm a disabled veteran and I work as a school administrator. I was injured in Iraq and went into teaching after I got out of the service. Besides having breathing issues and PTSD, I have some pretty messed up knees. I've had two surgeries on each knee, but I still feel pain with each step. I need to use a cane sometimes to help me walk when the pain is too bad or they lock up or are extra weak that day. So I have an assortment of canes I've received and purchased over the years. I prefer the ones made by Cold Steel and I've received the Axe Head cane a few years ago as a gift from a student and their parents. I love this thing. It's as tough as they come and looks cool, kind of like an axe, but only if you really look at it when it's not being held. So last year, before, co before COVID became as famous as it is now, I was shopping at a local Walmart and decided to stop into McDonald's for a snack. I like their oatmeal raisin cookies. I sat at one of the tables with three cookies and a Diet Coke. A few tables away was a mother, entitled mother, and two teens. Both of the teens were boys, and I would say that one was 15, entitled boy 1, while the other was about 13, entitled boy 2, give or take. While sitting there, I took out the novel I always keep in my backpack. At that time, I was rereading the Going Home Survivalist series and enjoyed my snack. Within a few minutes of me reading, Entitled Boy 2 grabbed my cane that was resting against my table and said something along the lines of, Look at this cool stick, it looks like an axe. His brother, Entitled Boy 1, grabbed it from him and looked it over. Now, I have PTSD from my time in Iraq and a short temper and I will admit that my first reaction was to grab my EDC weapon. At that time, it was just an SNW 638. I immediately removed my hand from the holster though and just got up, took two steps over to them and yanked it from his hands and said, that's mine. I then sat back down and went back to eating, all the while keeping an eye on the kids. No more than 30 seconds pass, an entitled mother comes over asking why I took the stick out of her kids' hands. She states that they were only looking at it. I just looked at her and said, it's my cane and I can do whatever I darn well please with it. She then goes over to the McDonald's counter and complains to the cashier that I'm being rude to her and her kids and I'm swearing at them. I decided to just walk away and get what I needed and check out. I went to where I had left my basket and went to the camping aisle to get the last of my items and then was planning to go to the checkout. That's when Walmart's lost prevention specialist came to visit me. They told me that they had a complaint that I was walking around with an axe and threatening people. I told them that I don't have an axe, just my cane. No more had I said those words that two police officers came up to me. I can remember thinking, only at Walmart. When the officers arrived, they asked me what I was doing. I told them that I was just shopping and that I had just told these two staff members that I don't have an axe. I did inform the officers that I had a concealed firearm but had a CCW permit. I told them I was keeping my hands in plain view and would only show them my permit if they asked me to. That's when I noticed Entitled Mother and her two spawn behind them. Entitled Mother was telling them that I had threatened her family with that axe in my hands and had cussed at them to boot. I slowly lifted my cane up and handed it to them to see. They saw that it was just a cane. They asked for my CCW permit, and I showed it to them. Once they checked it out and saw that my cane was a cane, they asked me what happened. When I tried to tell them about Entitled Boy 1 and Entitled Boy 2 taking my cane and me yanking it back, Entitled Mother started calling me a liar. They had to make her step back and be quiet so they could talk to me. I told them that they could check the cameras if they wanted, but all I did was grab my property back and told Entitled Mother that it was my darn cane. After several minutes, I had to sit because my knees were killing me. I asked if I could briefly use one of the folding chairs behind me and surprisingly, the staff member said yes. Finally, the officer said that everything with me was fine and I could continue shopping. One even said that he liked my cane. I told him it was a gift from a student and explained why I needed it. Turns out he served in Iraq too, but a few years after I did. They told me they would deal with Entitled Mother and her kids and if they bothered me again, to just call the police. I thanked them and made my way to the checkout. I decided I wouldn't go through all that and not buy the items in my cart. After checking out, I saw Entitled Mother hanging out in the parking lot complaining on the phone. She started yelling at me as I loaded the items into the bed of my pickup truck. Rather than just ignoring her and driving away, 
I opened my mouth and said loudly so everyone nearby could hear, You know, I have no idea how anyone as loud-mouthed, fat, ugly, and dumb as you could ever find a man, let alone get him hard enough to knock you up. I then hopped quickly into my truck and drove away before I could hear any comeback she would have. I admit, I could have handled it better, but I just don't like people touching my stuff and I don't like people lying about me. I still use that cane by the way, it's just too darn good not to use. In your opinion, do you think that OP overreacted in this situation, or do you think OP had every right to do everything that they did? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Gene Bread. Entitled parents try to steal my luggage, clearly with my name on it. This happened roughly two years ago. So a bit of background, I was living here in the US for quite a good chunk of my childhood. I'm half Filipino and half American. So I was very confused to find out that interesting revaluation. Anyways, after finding out about my heritage, my mom quickly changes the topic that we're going to the Philippines for a quick vacation and a family reunion. I wasn't wanting to go in the first place, but I knew how important that was for my dad, so I made it happen. When first arriving at the airport, I was met with a ridiculous crowd. People pushing each other, desperate to save a few seconds, kids crying, parents nagging, the whole lot. Anyways, we get to the security checkout and I had to surrender my luggage. And we had to go through another inspection after that. My bag goes through the x-ray thingy and comes out the other side. After my security scan, I saw two adults, probably in their late 40s, with my bag. I told my mom about it and she said I should just go get it since she trusts me. A little bit of hesitation later and I finally asked them to give me back my luggage. They immediately shut me down stating that I should go back to my parents. I made it clear that it was my luggage. They shrugged it off and, me being a confused 11 year old, I just screamed. My mom hears it and she notices the two adults walking away with my luggage. I saw the name, the color, and even the small marking I set there as a reminder. By the way, they were short on staff so no one could advert the crisis. Then my mom intervenes, stating that that was my luggage. Then she saw the name tag. It was definitely mine. Screaming began and names were being called. As the attempt to run away and escape, they were met by two security guards who stopped them. Long story short, they checked the security footage and confirmed that it was indeed mine. As they walked away in pathetic defeat, they were cussing and threatening us, calling us many names. I was just glad we made it out. To be fair on their part though, they really could have genuinely thought it was theirs in the first place, even with the name clearly visible. I definitely wouldn't assume that this was any kind of mistake. If it was a genuine mistake, I don't think that they would be cussing you out and making a fuss at the very end of it. I think this was definitely a case of opportunity thieves trying to steal something from a kid. Maybe you hope that you can make a quick buck off of maybe like a 3DS or something like that being in the suitcase. Considering it's just a kid's, if you grab it and you walk off quick, maybe the kid doesn't notice. That's definitely what I think. Our next story is by Two Bendy Cat, entitled Dad Attempts a Kidnapping. I have a medical issue that caused a slight physical developmental delay. So when I was a kid, I looked roughly four years younger than I was. So when the story took place, I was 14, but I looked 10. 4 foot 2, 90 pounds, baby faced. We had a standard poodle, big floofy dog, during this era, and it was the responsibility of my brother and I to walk her after school. So I would walk her three to four times per week. Now for the story. So after school one day, I took my dog to the park to throw the ball around a few times. She was a very smart dog, so she'd only fetch something once or twice, then demand in her silent way that we humans had to fetch the ball for her. Thus, I wasn't planning on staying long. Suddenly, I see a red jeep parking, and a middle-aged man steps out and approaches me. The entitled dad says, Hey, you've got a beautiful dog. Can I pet her? Me being a little weirded out that he put so much effort into petting a dog say, Yeah, sure. Entitled dad petting the dog says, She's beautiful. You guys are playing in the park today, huh? That sounds like fun. Do you do other things for fun? At this point, I'm getting major red flags, so I take a couple of steps closer to a mom who's watching her kids in the sandbox, making sure I'm in earshot. I say, yeah, sometimes. He says, do you like Jeeps? I've got a red Jeep over there if you want to see it. I say, I like Jeeps, but no thank you. He says, come on, it'll be fun. I say, no. He says, I've got a daughter your age, she's eight. You could come to my house to play with your dog. Maybe you two could have some fun together sometime. 
I say, sir, I'm 14. He says, that's no problem, you'd still have fun. I could arrange it with your mom. What's your phone number? I say, sir, I'm not giving you my phone number. At this point, the entitled dad pulls my phone number off my dog's collar. I call my dog, put her leash on, and we start heading home. I was interested in studying criminal justice, so I managed to remember a partial plate off the entitled dad's Jeep. Once I was half a block away, I check behind me, and he's turned around from his parking space and is watching me, trying to see where I live. I duck into an alley and try to hide. Thankfully, he drives off. I then walk home. By the time I get home, my mom's on the phone arguing with entitled dad. She answered the door looking furious, but she calmed down the second she saw how terrified I looked. Once she gets off the phone with the guy and writes down his number off the caller ID, I tell her everything that went down at the park, and we call the non-emergency number for the police. The operator, horrified, sends a cop car right away. One cop takes the report, while another unit tracks the guy down based on the guy's phone number and the partial plate I got. The mom who was also at the park near me was walking by while we were talking to the cop, and offered her statement to the officer regarding what happened. Based on what my mom and the cops have told me, the entitled dad was completely confused on why we'd called the cops or be upset regarding his actions. Since nothing explicitly happened, they couldn't charge the guy with anything, but to this day, he remains on a list of people the police keep an eye on. I would sure hope that the police maintain that list and keep an eye on these people because I guess you could say that nothing did explicitly happen, but it's very clear that this guy was very explicitly trying to make something happen. It's a terrifying thought to think about for sure. And our final story of the day is by Merciless Idiot. Entitled Grandma insults and beats a 9-year-old me for kissing my girlfriend. I, now 32-year-old male, grew up in Milano, Italy, and my grandma, born in 1919 if my memory doesn't fail me, grew up in the countryside of Mantova, a rural area where, when she was young, arranged-slash-forced marriage was a common practice, and the Catholic religion, which was forced into every kid's mind, was more similar to modern extremist Islam than to modern Christianity. Just to be clear, no, I don't blame anyone for their religion, but I don't approve extremists of any kind. Main story, my grandma lived in a building with a backyard fenced by bushes, and complete with a sandbox. When I was around 8, Veronica, who was one year younger than me, moved into my grandma's building with her family, to the apartment next to my grandma's house. Veronica was, to my 9-year-old self, beautiful, cute and sweet, and after a year spent playing together, we found out we liked each other, so we started spending more time alone and sometimes gave each other our first, shy kisses, always hidden behind the bushes. During summer of my ninth year of life, I was laying on the grass right behind a bush, hidden from the sight of the building's windows, kissing my girlfriend when we heard someone approaching. We stopped and stand still, frightened, but no one came, so we started kissing again. And to be clear, we were 8 or 9 years old, so we weren't doing anything too dirty. No French kisses, no touchy stuff, just kisses. We just didn't know anything else, as you should expect from kids that age. Yet, when I've gone back to grandma's home later, she immediately slapped me and started screaming that a bird told her about how much I've dishonored her by doing such dirty airies. She literally made up a new word in Italian in order to say dirty things. Grandma yelled I was the son of the devil, a regular insult from her due to the fact that my parents weren't married and I've never been christened, that Veronica was overly promiscuous because she pushed me to the road of sin, that such things should only be done after marriage, and stuff like that. Each single sentence was followed by a slap. Of course, as if Veronica lived on the same floor on the next door, her parents heard everything and they got mad. Luckily, she told them we just kissed once and that my grandma was overreacting, so after a couple of days, they were cool again. I wasn't that lucky. Since that moment, grandma started following me pretty much everywhere, hoping to catch me doing dirty airies again, just to get an excuse to punish me. She also never missed a chance to tell everyone, including other kids and their parents, about how dirty I was because Veronica corrupted me with sin bad-mouthing both of us at any chance. She did it mostly in front of me. It was heck for the nine-year-old me, and of course, basically destroyed the friendship I had with the girl I was secretly hoping to marry someday. Kids drama, am I right? 
By the way, this wasn't even the worst stuff my grandma did to me, but I'll post something more in the future. I mean, kids will be kids. I'm definitely not a parent. I wouldn't exactly know what's the right thing to do in this situation if you found out about this stuff happening, but surely slapping them over and over isn't the right way. I just don't see how anybody could treat their kids like that and then expect their kids to show joy or even want to be around them. You just want to set a good example, you wouldn't want to instill fear in them, but that's just how I feel about it. But with that being said, that's a wrap on another bunch of stories here today. As always, if you guys have any favorite videos of this bunch, let me know which one in the comments down below and why. And if you enjoyed the stories in general, if you could subscribe to this channel, it'd mean a lot to me. I make these videos daily, and it's by far and away the best way to support my channel. So no matter what you did, whether it was subscribing or liking, leaving a comment, I just appreciate the heck out of you guys. And as always, I'll be back tomorrow with even more stories right here on the Storytime channel.